Good morning, welcome to Technic Tuesday 20. As usual, I'm just going to finish getting myself set up. Let me not get the wrong word away. Pick this up a little bit, I think. Let's wait for this to let my feed catch up so I can see all your comments. The volume down. That's it. Okay. I think that all looks fine. Can everybody hear me okay? I'm going to sit myself down. Get comfy. Good morning, Andrine. Morning, Andrine. You all right, darling? <laughs> How are you? <sighs> morning, Tracy. <laughs> Good morning, Tracy. That was a brilliant live last night. Hi, Maxine. Hi, Vanessa. Yeah, we're good, thank you, Andrine. Okay. How are you? In between meetings. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> if you're still in your same job, Maxine, it's obviously your busiest time of year. Hi, Catherine. No problem. Oh, Andreen, it was brilliant. It was the um, card holder, the book, the gift set. That was great. And the um, origami gift boxes. I've got to have a go at them origami gift boxes. Yeah, they look great. No, no. <laughs> We've got so much paper. <laughs> now I know what to do with them. <laughs> Hi, Donna. Hi, right, Donna. <laughs> I think he's had too much coffee this morning. <laughs> Hi, Bev. Oh, is it damp? It's it's quite chilly here this morning. <laughs> Good morning, Elizabeth. Oh, no, you all have to get it on catch up. Good morning, Marion. Okay, how are we doing? So we're going to be trying... Uh, Trying a hand at a little bit of no line colouring today. This is, as usual with my techniques, it's my version of uh, of no line colouring. I try and find the easiest easiest ways of doing things uh, for me, which I think we all do. Good morning, Yvonne. Hi, Jill. Yes, it's nice and sunny down here in Sussex. Um, Bit on the nippy side. Morning, Yvonne. So obviously, you know, you can take what you want from it and uh, and then find what works best for you and what's easiest for you. Good morning, Susan. Oh, thank you, Donna. Let's bring this one up a bit higher so we can have a closer look. It's just if you uh it's a it's a cheat's way at being arty, if you like. I'm very arty anyway. <laughs> Sunny in Yorkshire too, brilliant. Is it? Wow. <laughs> Stunning Yorkshire. Thank you, Catherine. Yes, not long for your summer. 
Okay, so we're going to be using the, the latest stamps, Julie's Daisies, which are fantastic. If you like colouring of, of any kind, these are brilliant. Thank you, Donna. So I'm also going to be using watercolour card. I've got the uh, fade out no line colouring ink. I know that lots of different companies do these now. Um, so go with what you've got or can get hold of. Um, for the sentiment, I've got Versafine Claire uh, Nocturne and a little tip with those as well. Um, but using a stamp platform and an acrylic block. Um, medium wise I'm going to be using ink tense pencils um, and then ordinary colour pencils some watercolour pens and some fine liner pens so a little bit of everything hi Christine outside, outside. <laughs> um, I've got my trusty pencil sharpener um, you'll need some water water brushes and an ordinary brush I've um, got some true black card. This is a 15 by 15 card blank. Um, and just, you know, glue, trimmers, um, essentials like that, a bit of copy paper to, to mop up with. Okay, so let's get started. Let's unpack these. start with our stamping. Let's bring this stamp platform in. Okay. okay, so I've got a bit of the uh, watercolour card. This is Pink Frog watercolour card. Obviously use, uh, use what you've got. Behave yourself, Liz. I'm sitting around the pool in India watching this. Wow. <laughs> That's how to make us jealous, isn't it? Lucky girl. <laughs> We're going to use the largest of the uh, daisy stamps. And you want it roughly in the centre and slightly upwards. And then just uh, pop it to where, where it looks nice for you. Okay, let's hold those down. Pick this up. We're going to stamp in exactly the same way that we always do. We're going to give this a good squidge. All the way. So it is a technical term. this leg in a little. Now you probably won't see this at all. I will bring, it, I will bring it up. <laughs> but that's it. the whole point. If you can't want to it. go in again, this is the whole point of the ink is so that you don't see the image once it's stamped out. working. <laughs> So let me try and bring this up without knocking everything over. There we go. <laughs> now you can see it. <laughs> so that's the effect you get. And then at the same time, you want to be making a little mask of your daisy as well. So just on a bit of copy paper or mask it. Ordinary ink. Cut around it and you're good to go. Oh my right. god, did you see them flowers and leaves what I'm doing cut out? <laughs> you have the patience of a saint, Andre. <laughs> good morning. So we can take that one off now. Then we're going to go in with the leaves. Oh, my jewelry's up. I behave myself now. Is that Joe? Is that Joel Chanu? It's Joe! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's 
leaves over. We are going to pop our leaves so they appear to be coming out from behind the flower. So this is coming into here, just onto that side. Pick that up, then I'm going to place the mask down. Now you might have noticed one of these petals has got a different shape to the other ones and this is really handy for lining up because you will always find the right way of covering or cutting out or whatever else you're doing. I'm just going to hold that down with the uh, magnet. Hi Kim! The ink Christine is the no line fade out one. Um, I know lots of companies do them now though. Studio Light do one. I think Alt New might do one as well. Repeat that process again. Just put an extra little bit of pressure around where the mask is because there's that uh, change in uh, height on the surface. There we go. Can't see it, people. Can't see it. <laughs> We'll bring this up afterwards. I'm going to give the stamp a little wipe in between. You're welcome. Hello, Sandra. No problem. Then we're going to have one coming up towards the top. As you know, I do love masking. Put this one down again. Oh, it's so handy to have that. That one petal that's different, so it makes life so much easier. Put that in there. Come in again with that ink. Um, if you don't have the the fade out, no line ink. Another good one is ordinary distress ink in a really pale colour, like the um, it's tattered rose, isn't it? Um, old linen, or old, pa old paper, isn't it? Not old linen. So something really pale. I do remember doing it once with the the rose one, which was really good for it. And then we're gonna have one coming out this side. Things always look nicer in threes. Something to do with our weird human brains. Lined up. More ink. <laughs> Great minds, eh? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it is. It is tattered rose, isn't it? That is quite a good one, yeah. But um, in the ordinary distress ink, not an oxide, because there's too much pigment in it. Yeah. Okay, so that's that done. Let's give that a little wipe. Hi, Karen. And then for our sentiment, put the ink to one side. Okay, so as we've done before, just to line everything up, we know, I'm going to be using the happy birthday, we know that this piece is 13. So the halfway point, yep, yeah, that's true, Tracy. So that's 6.5. And I want it about two centimetres up from the bottom. So we want a nice straight sentiment. So I'm going to use the grid on here to line this up. That's that. Move it over a little bit to that side. 
seams and those lines to get that nice and straight there. Pick that up again. Okay, now I keep quite an old ink pad. Yes, of course you go and carry it. It is where have I put it? hiding it's fade out no line colouring ink um but like I was saying there are quite a lot of companies that, that do the same sort of version as this now this is quite an old ink pad it's quite dry which I find is great for sentiments because you don't want them getting too gunged up with a lot of excess ink and distorting the the fine text. Julie says, fairy fingers give that a chance to soak in, especially as it's the watercolour card. It's much more fibrous. There we go. That's it. And you have a lovely sentiment. So that's all our stamping done for this bit, which is quite, uh, quite good. Well, I've already got one stamped out because I didn't want to smudge this part of it. This ink is fine to go straight away with your mediums. There we go. So let's move that out the way. did before bring this up so you can have a have a look at all of it there we go obviously the whole point of this is uh because it's such a, a fine light ink it will more or less disappear and look as though you've done the whole thing which is great so <laughs> it's, it is cheating but it, it's it's really pretty so let's come in with the intense pencils first. You can use whatever you've got. There are lots of different watercolour pencils now. I'm going to go in with the same colours, I think. So one with the orange. So let's bring Your this down a bit. <laughs> Bring you down a bit and you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Bring that over a little bit. I have to wait see. for the I have to wait for the feed to catch up so I can see where we are. It's a bird. It's a bird. It's magic. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna come in and just gonna apply a bit of the colour right at the base of each bottle. You don't have to be too careful about this. <laughs> I've been using it for quite a little while now and it doesn't actually fade as such. I think where they get the, the word from is um, because when you colour it, it disappears. Um, so it does the ink doesn't actually fade it stays there it's because you're adding your mediums on top of it that make it disappear because i did think that at first i thought well that's not fading okay that's the first part <laughs> oh what are you saying Donnie? you are a proper artist of course you're a proper artist so i'm going to use the I think it's the number two, but it's come off where I've used it so much. Water brush. It's the, the medium one. Just here. No, you didn't get it wrong, Yvonne, because I thought exactly the same thing. I, I stamped a bit out to see what would happen and kept leaving it and leaving it. <laughs> and it was still <laughs> it was still there. So I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not saying about anything, you two. So we're just going to pull from the centre outwards so it's lighter as we get to, to the end we just 
I'm just dabbing it off here on my hand. Can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Each one, pull the colour out. This is another another technique that's nice and uh, nice and relaxing. It re I mean, once you once you get into the the swing of doing this, you can uh, you can do things quite quickly, and it really does look as though uh, you've spent quite some time creating a piece of art for somebody. It makes it all the more special. So each time I would just brush the excess colour from the brush before going on to the next petal so we don't build up too much colour. Oh yes it would. I have got some of the um, crafters companion ones and I always forget to use them. I've had them for years. They would look lovely, the sparkle ones. So as we get to the end, it's getting lighter. You could do it from the other end, it doesn't really matter. It just depends on what, uh, what look you're going for. lines still Keep looking at the other foam make sure I'm still in shot now you're not doing anything particularly uh, difficult or awkward you're just pulling the colour from one end of something to the other and already it's looking quite uh, quite pretty let the water do the work for you moving the pigments there we go so we'll just leave that to dry off a little bit before we move on to the next next layer of colour if you like so I've got a nice nice bright green here as well that I'm going to use for this one so we'll do exactly the same thing with the leaves just come in there at the bases of each leaf One poking out there, just go a little bit around in there because that's where some shadow might be. They're brilliant, aren't they? It is watercolour card, Jill, yes. Ink tense pencils are amazing. I've been, um, I mean, these are these are Brian's that I've that I've pinched. <laughs> um, I think Santa might be might be bringing some. But they are the difference is incredible, and you don't get as much of that chalky finish as you do with uh, with some or the um, like a waxy finish that you get with some pencils so I'm just going to wipe the same brush off again make that clean and again make sure we're in the right position 
think it's exactly the same thing. Bring that up so it gets lighter towards the end. They are great, aren't they, Andrine? If you won't tell Brian, he'll be wanting commission. So we'll be pulling that away from the bottom up to the top. There you go. There you go. I get something right. I've got good taste, mate. <laughs> Again, I'm wiping in between so we don't get too much build up of colour. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Is that a perfect jog? What I missed? I'm talking about ink tense pencils. Yeah. We're starting by diluting the pigments over at the base and then pulling it outwards. Because it's watercolour card, obviously, you can uh, be quite rough with it if you like. Oh! They sound uh, interesting, Joe. Are they a bit like the distress ones? Because they're woodless, aren't they? And I completely forgot about using them actually, but they would work quite nicely. Obviously, I wouldn't suggest doing this technique onto um, super smooth or anything because the the makeup of the card just wouldn't handle <coughs> the the water or the friction from the brush. If you wanted to try this technique though with alcohol markers, which you can do, then Super Smooth is the one to go for. You notice I keep turning the card as well, it makes it easier, more comfortable for, for you when you're crafting. Yes, here we are. See, it's poking out. Okay, so that's our first layer of colour down. So, next, I think we'll go in with a little bit of yellow onto the tips it does doesn't it i love this um this technique yes donna absolutely you can actually see the the pigments moving can't you it's very relaxing exactly that's exactly it andrine <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely what we're going for. That's so, beer, my beer. Well, it's it's not my. <laughs> yeah, yourself. Not my technique. Yeah, yourself. In any shape or form. But it is a good one, and I do enjoy doing it. So I'm just popping some yellow on the tips of the leaves. These have dried off sufficiently, so that's good to lay some more colour down. Makes it a bit awkward if things are still damp. Yeah, they are bad. 
yes they are so again with the water brush exactly the same as we did before and we're going to blend that just into the middle so we've got a two-tone if you like These blends so lovely. Am I going to get my pencils back after this? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> oh, everyone, I think I've lost my pencils. <laughs> This really makes it start to um, pop off the page, if you like. When you uh, add the other colour, you could put, it doesn't have to be yellow, you could put any colour you like onto the end. Brilliant watercolour. Hmm. The more intense, the more inky. I think it is, as Brian said, they've got extra pigment in them extra the you know the ink part so let's go and get me some more tracy that would be um that would be lethal i'd be living in there i think thank you i haven't no it's somewhere i've always wanted to go to as well all right let me leave so we're okay i'm going to go in with a slightly darker we've got a nice mossy kind of a green here Share the pencil. <laughs> Sandra, <laughs> I shared them. I never got them back. So I'm just gonna come in. Just gonna come in just on the bottom part of each leaf. To create a little bit of uh, of depth. Not too much. And the same on this side. This will give it a little bit more form. Off again. <laughs> and again, no wiggle of that colour. Across the bottom, where else is going from? Still wiping that excess colour off of the brush in between so we don't get too much. This is just going to add the depth and dimension to it. And then when I've done a few, I just come in again and blend the light over into the dark. Pushing that colour back down towards the bottom. <laughs> you can see I'm not being particularly neat and tidy about showing the colour, just a little circular movement to make this quite naturalistic looking. And again, just come in. Blend the 
two colours together. You can see the pigments actually moving as you press it. It's quite magical. Yes, they are. Yep, definitely. If you put the pencil over something damp, it's just going to drag. Okay, so it's one side. To this side, or oh, just stick at it, Sandra. Just small little movements. And then at the end of the day, it's just a bit of card, isn't it? If you want to have a little practice first and don't want to use yeah. the watercolour card, use something else that's quite fibrous. The um, Dragon's All Purpose card is quite good for this as well. How about just cut, how about just stamping the leaves out and just like I said? Yeah, well, any, anything real, just you yeah. know. Had a good wipe. So you're coming in from the light side. Blending into that dark. Keep cleaning that nib off. Otherwise you'll just get more and more colour. No good to dirty nib. Definitely not. Okay, so that's that layer. Just wipe my hand off, getting quite damp. <laughs> you could always do it on the on your um mat or a bit of cloth or something as well if you wanted to. So I'm gonna go in again to the centre of the flower and this time I'm gonna give it a sharpen. You want quite a nice fine point to the nib for this. There we go. You can feel with that and see that it's it's ready to work on. I'm just going to put a little bit just at the very base of each petal. Sometimes when you look at the flowers, they have that little bit of green. That's it. I'm going to get the smaller water brush, which is uh, the fine tip one. And I'm just going to pull this out as well. Just drag it out, I haven't got to be too precise, it's a very small amount here. What colour was that? The colour, let's have a look, is leaf green, 1600. They do, Rachel. So you also add in a bit of uh, shading as well. Of natural colour. Oh, 
That's all of them here. Yeah. So they're coming together now nicely. Just going to pop a little bit of yellow down into the center. Dig all that out. We're going to add like some bits and bobs to the center as well because that's important. The leaves, I might just, oh, where's the heat gun on? I might just give that a quick blast just to be on the safe side. Yeah, please. Just a gentle blast, just to make sure. Thank you, Christine. You go in with the pencil again and it's it is a bit damp it will drag and it will grab and stick onto the, the card which isn't so good leaf we're going to do the same that we did with the petals i'm going to add some yellow across the top this could almost be like a highlight or where the sun is catching the top of the leaves it just helps it to give it a bit more definition nice to go in with some different different colours on something as well so it's not all just green or whatever you've got and you start looking at things as there's colours in everything I'm just going to blend that in quite quickly Track from the other colours that we've already put down, it just adds to it. Just giving the brush a little wiggle over the top here. That's it. And I'm going to come in. brushes and as long as you, you can do this but just make sure oh. you don't get the wood wet oh oh <laughs> so you're only touching the color oh. so you can go directly onto the brush and just start adding a little bit of that was scary a little bit of color just into the center there Ooh, move that up Adds a bit of blotchy colour to the middle there. Okay. So let's put those to one side and we'll move on to our next medium. Next ones I'm going to use are some of the ordinary colour pencils, if you like. Not really ordinary, but um, 
these are the ones that you can use for colouring onto black paper and card. I just I've, I use these for everything now because they just they just work so vibrantly onto to anything really, not just black. They're a great great colour. So sharpener out again. These are Faber Castell. If anybody wants to try them, again, we want nice sharp points on here because it's quite fine work. For now, thank you. I know a lot of people like that sharpener. What we're going to do now is we're going to start outlining and because it's the same color it's not going to stand out it's just going to blend into everything it's brilliant isn't it joe love that sharpener okay, hope you can see i'm just going to follow the line just gently all the way around You want to, I don't know, this is naturalistic looking. We want things to have that edge. You can still see clearly where the, the stamped line is. But when you look at anything, really, it has got a definite edge to it. Oh, Pippi, you're making Donna spend all her money. Oops. I'm sorry, Donna. It's Christmas for yourself. Think of it that way. Oh, oh things for you all over Christmas then, Donna. And turn the pencil slightly every time as well, just to keep it sharp. And then we'll come in and we'll do those lines. Donna's pulling up. So that, does that mean she's a proper crafter now, isn't she? Yeah. yeah. True artist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just doing three quick light lines from the centre out. So you should be my Julie. You should be really sorry. She's back. <coughs> no problem. Thank you. <laughs> When you've got stuff to do, you've got stuff to do. There we go. And then there are some little lines on the ends of each of the petals. So we'll just go in there. Just do a few squiggles. Be too neat. And then I'm going to be going out of shot because we're working in quite a tight space. Did you sit with the need to make the concentration of water on the tank? The clock, I know. That's a very loud tick on that clock, isn't it? <laughs> to the drama <laughs> okay so that's the orange part done now we go to the green we're going to do exactly the same thing oh, that down a bit. Up to the bottom to the top 
Hi, Angela. That's fine. I still think that Santa's a lazy sod. All he does is work once a day. Once a year. Just get a deep sleep. Not applying too much pressure. This is where the sharp nib of the pencil comes into its own. around <laughs> well we won <laughs> there should be some sort of crafters fund shouldn't there Should be on prescription. Okay, so once we've been around the leaves, I'm going to come in and do oh, the stalks. And this is where it does start to look like we spent ages drawing and painting. Just gonna follow that line up. Yeah, just change the type of pencil so the colour. Yeah, you do. You've gone from one pencil set to another, aren't you, my girl? Yeah, there's that. Yes, these are the um, Faber Castell. Um, can't remember the name. It's the ones that you use on black card or paper. But I just I like the intensity of the colour with them, and they just, they just feel nice to use. They feel nice when you when you put them down. So we come in there with the bridge, just do that centre line. Ah, is it on the packet there? Black edition, they're called black edition. <laughs> oh, sometimes I know what is it with crafting, and it seems to be everywhere as now as well now, doesn't it? So you can go to any shop and you can see something, and uh, yeah. Oh, I'm, not, I'm, not I'm just going to add a little bit more. Shading into the bases here. That's it. That's fine. So that's those. Now we're just going to have another change of medium. Yes. Yeah, the Black Edition Faber Castell, they really are uh, are nice. And you get a good amount in, in there as well. So I'm just going in with some fine liner pens. Here's the, uh, the green one. These are the stabler ones, but oh, everywhere does, does fine liners. And I'm literally just going to make some dots. In the centre there, just a few, few little dots 
I chose the fine liner because it is fine. Um, you can make make small marks, small details, and it's perfect for it. So that's the colouring part over. Now we're going to add some background shading. <laughs> You're going to be spending more now, aren't you? It's all my fault. <laughs> so I've got clear acrylic block you could use that you could if you've got a blending mat you could use that and i've now got the stadler <laughs> uh watercolor brush pens got the lightest blue obviously any watercolor pen will work beautifully with this this is where you will need a bit of water and an ordinary brush i tend to this is what I would call a wet medium rather than a dry like a pencil. I wouldn't use um, a water brush because it tends to suck some of the colour up into the um, into the, the like the water container, the tube, whatever that's called, um, and it discolours it. So you go to use it again, and uh, you've already got coloured water, which isn't so good. So I am literally let's move this up a little bit, shall we? And you can see I'm just going to go straight on the top of there I'm going to add some water to that mix that together and pop a bit of copy paper under there so you can see it with the help of it up that little bit of blue we've done this uh, in the past as well up the way bring this over and we are literally gonna do an outline hopefully you can see that I like using blue it's nice and subtle Just a, a flat brush I'm using here for this. So we're just wiggling this around in between those petals as well. Just lifts it up, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> In the past, we've used grey, um, but with florals and things, I quite like using the, the blue. It's like a nice, nice sunny, sunny sky. And, uh, this could be a great spring card if you like. Picking up quite a lot of colour from the block. Just going all the way around. Be quite free with it, don't worry too much. Add some more down in a moment, that's fine. Just ink. Do, 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 do. It is watercolour pen. Oh, okay. So I've gone for a nice light colour. Okay. I might get away with that one, one lot of ink, I think. It's all the way around there, and to highlight the uh, or emphasize the sentiment. I'm just going to pop a line down under here. So let's move that out of the way now. Get a bit of white. That's that one. I'm just going to 
going to come back in with some water and to blend it out to go around the edge Blend in the dark and into the, the light or the non coloured, if you like, just to soften it up a little bit. Oh, Elf on the Shelf. Let's see how we do it. This sounds intriguing, Tracy. I wonder what the elves I wonder what your elves get up to. <laughs> we didn't do that last year, did we? No. That was a going we did. this year. <laughs> we did start doing elf on the shelf. <laughs> I think we took the I think we the tech to the elves to Harry Potter. <laughs> I probably wouldn't let me. I can't believe there's an uh, Elf on the Shelf advert. There she is. It's just a gentle little squishy movements, little circular movements, just to blend that away. Like I say, don't worry about it. It'll be as free as you like with it. Same here. Can't see that. Yeah. Help. A little bit obsessed with Christmas. We've got um, we've got quite a collection of elves now. Oh what? There we go. Beautiful, my friend. Is there anything? You want to make a little bit softer, just go in again. And it literally fades and blends into each other. Get that water out of the way before I do something drastic yeah, with it. Water. Actually, yeah. I'll just give I'm gonna give this a quick quick blow. this oh thank you everyone <laughs> i can't wait to see this the doodle mm -hmm. that's all right it's okay yeah let me give this a quick glass saturated that a little bit thank you so much I've got rid of some of the excess water off of here. I'll bring it up, up a little bit for a closer look. You can see I've, I've got a, a new ink pad which I went went straight into using. It's a little bit too juicy. So I have to turn it over and start again and use the old ink pad. Together, but I'm going to leave this to dry before I make the actual card so it sits nice and flat. The watercolour card is great, that will flatten out nicely when it's completely dry. Let's move that right out again, I think. That's it. Okay, so if I just go through the 
card dimensions with you so you know i have got this on a pdf so i will pop that onto the group so it's the 15 by 15 card blank i've got a piece of the true black this is uh 13.3 by 13.3 because we want just a little a little teeny tiny border around there to keep it quite nice and simplistic looking so i will let those dry before i put that together so this is the one we already had done that's it so you, i mean you can do these in any colors you like any configurations you like you know the, the choice is yours just go for it please have a go at this technique it, it's so rewarding um, when you step back and, and look at what you've done, it's um, it's it's quite a quite a thrill actually. <laughs> oh, thank you everybody. Um, yeah, so I shall be back in two weeks. Um, I'm not sure with what yet. I'm trying to think of something um, nice and festive for us to do. Um, but I will let you know. Um. We might have a go at something a little bit different as it's as it's uh, getting closer to Christmas. Something a bit jolly. So uh, <laughs> we will get onto paper casting at some point, <laughs> which is Brian's big thing. Um, but yeah, it might might involve some candles. So um, yeah, keep an eye out for that. I will decide today, and then if if you want to craft along. I will let you know well in advance so that we can perhaps do something together for a change. There we go. So thank you all for joining me. It's been lovely. Enjoy your no line colouring. Post them onto the to the group and let us all have a look because I absolutely love seeing uh, seeing what you create. Uh, have fun. Take care, and I will see you all in a fortnight's time um i haven't got the daisies yet you need these they're brilliant absolutely brilliant and the, the stencil as well is fantastic i love it so thank you very much and i will see you soon bye 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 <laughs>